Okay, welcome to Pay It Forward. Today's tutorial I'm going to be showing you how to make this very sweet little monkey shelf sitter. I would probably suggest that this project is suitable for an intermediate skill level sewer. If you would like to make uh, this one along with me, simply click on the link in the description below. You can download your free PDF pattern template and we can get started. So to get started on a little monkey today, you'll need your two head pieces with interfacing applied. You'll need your four body pieces, uh, which are cut two, cut four, cut two reversed. And you'll need your uh, front in a contrasting color like I have here. You'll need your four little arm pieces. Again, it's cut four, two reversed. I've only got two here because I've actually made up my little my first arm here, so it's just for the sake of time. So two little arm pieces, these all have interfacing applied. Your leg piece is the same, it's cut four, two reversed. And I've already made up my little leg, so I'll be showing you on this one. You'll also need your little face piece. You'll need your little ear pieces. These all have fusible web applied. And you will need your little heart piece for your chest if you would like to pop that on. Little tiny nose piece. I like to make that little nose piece in a felt just a little bit darker than your face. So it's not really obvious, but it's there. You'll also need a couple of buttons to attach your arms onto your body. So two matching buttons for that one. You'll also need a larger button to attach the head to the body. You'll also need two suitable little buttons for eyes and I like really tiny little dark buttons for that one. We'll be stitching the mouth in. You'll also need some type of braided cord uh, of about this width. It's uh, the measurement for the tail. You need a length of something which is 25 centimeters long. I've actually taken some roll ribbon and I've just plaited that up to create my own sort of braided cord but you can certainly purchase braided cord just on its own. Uh, you could perhaps just use ribbon and, and plait it up, anything you like that you think is suitable uh, that matches. So to start today you'll also need some uh, polyester filling and perhaps some pellet filling if you have some otherwise just some dry uh, clean rice will do just for a bit of weight in the body. So let's get started on our first task which is we're going to begin on our little arms and legs. So we put right sides together with our two opposite pieces. So right sides together and you can see on this little arm that I leave the top curve open which I then close with a blanket stitch. So I like to sew mine. You can just pin these pieces together and sew them on the machine rather than pinning I just like to overcast my pattern pieces just because they hold nice and secure when I'm sewing them so I've just, I'm just using an extra strong upholstery thread so it really is just working from that top curve uh, and I'm going to tack this little piece all the way around and that will allow me to sew that seam on the machine. I use a fairly small uh, machine stitch probably about have my setting on about two and a half. My actual seam is only about three millimeters. It's very small when I machine stitch that seam and I, I like to sew it twice on the machine so it's nice and strong and it will hold that uh, firm filling. So you can see that I'm just going to work that stitch all the way around it's just to hold it and I'll just leave that top section open. So you can do both your arms in that way and then machine them and then your legs are done in the same way only this time we leave the top section open. So this is open because this is put into a seam and the seam that we're going to sew is this front one all the way to the toe and the back one all the way down to the toe and we leave the toes open for now and I'll show you how to fold those in. So machined twice, I will of course go ahead and overcast them first 
but as I said you can just pin them and then machine them so you can do both your arms and your legs that's our little arm with those two seams sewn all we need to do with that one is just to turn it through and this is our little leg so both those seams are sewed now we have to fold our toes down to create a little foot so we haven't, I haven't designed this one with a normal foot that goes around. I want it to have that more realistic toe. So that's why I've designed it this way. So we fold that little toe section down. The way that we do that is if you have overcast like I did here, I like to just remove those few overcasting stitches at the toes there so that I can open up that seam. So I can flatten that top seam and that bottom seam out because we're going to fold the toe down you can see there and we're just going to sew that toe front foot there that seam I'm going to do it on the machine again twice I like to overcast it first and it's probably best to pop a pin through exactly on that little intersection there and make sure that you've lined it up straight through the other seam and then I just like to overcast that edge and then machine it twice. So this is our little arm all turned through and I have just filled that little arm with stuffing. I fill the end of the hand very firm up to about just above the wrist and then a little softer because we're going to be closing that top as you can see with that one so we need it to be quite free of stuffing there so that we can sew that little seam which we'll do in a moment let me show you the foot so this is our little leg that's been turned through and we're just going to add a bit of stuffing in the base because we're going to create that little second leg so we're going to be sewing a little seam across here to, just to give us a bit of bend in that leg but first of all we need to add some stuffing now with the little arms with the little hands and the little feet I thoroughly recommend if you're going to be doing more of this sort of uh, soft sculpture sewing get yourself a pair of forceps if you can because I think there's no better tool for filling than forceps nice blunt ended forceps so we get ourselves a little bit of your polyester filling and we're just going to pop that one right down the bottom you see the forceps allow you to do that support the end and you can get that filling right down into the toe and we really want that to be quite firm which is why we sewed those seams twice and it's just a matter of filling that little foot to just above the ankle you can see that I'm supporting that foot while I'm packing that in really quite firm so what I'm going to be doing is filling that little foot just like that one till about just above the ankle you can see here that it's very firm here and it's just a little softer there and then I'm going to be making a measurement of seven centimeters from the top seam seven centimeters down and you can pop a pin in if you like you could you put a, a mark with your permanent marker but it will be exactly seven centimeters and I want to meet my seams so I'll make that measurement and I will pop my pin across and I will sew directly across on my machine twice in a matching thread colour and then we can fill a little more at the top of the leg so we'll do that so that's my little seam sewn in there it gives me that little fold in the leg we're just going to add a tiny little bit more stuffing just to fill out the top of that leg it really doesn't need much because again that needs to be closed at the top and incorporated into a seam so we just want it to be just plumped out a little so now I just I will just sew just sew a tacking stitch across the top of that that little leg there just to hold that stuffing in place and we can put those two little legs aside 
I'll show you how I deal with the top of the arm there. So I've threaded up my needle with uh, some, probably a medium perlay thread. I've actually gone for a matching colour, but you can contrast it if you like, depending on what colour you're making your little monkey. So I will just simply sew the, bind these two edges together with a blanket stitch, a very small blanket stitch. I'll come in with my needle, it'll come out right on the, between the two layers, right on the seam there where that machine stitching just finished. Just a knot in the end of my thread. And I will go ahead and sew a blanket stitch around that top. Now if you haven't sewn a blanket stitch before, have a look at my video, how to sew the blanket stitch and it will show you very clearly and up close how to do that stitch. So I will just work that stitch right around the top edge. So there we have our little arms completed and our little legs ready. So we'll just pop those aside. Now we start our work on our body front. So I'm making him up in a, with a lighter coloured belly. So I have just fused my little heart shape, if you're using a little heart shape, fuse my little heart shape on the left uh, side of his little chest there. The measurement from the point of his body to the lowest part of that heart is 7 centimetres, so that gives you an idea. Remember we have to sew this seam here, that centre seam, so you need to allow just enough room so that that little heart will sit to the left. Now I like to just... Um, so a blanket applique stitch around that heart. Again, I have a video that shows you how to do that. I'm going to use a, a, a contrasting a perle, fine perle thread here to do that. So I'll just work that little blanket applique stitch. Look that up on my channel, how to sew the blanket applique stitch, and that will show you how to do that. I will keep those stitches very small and just outline that heart. With that heart, just stitch nicely into place now. It's just a matter of putting right sides together. And we will sew, pin and sew. Again, I will overcast that first just to hold it into place. And you can pin and sew that centre front seam. And you can sew it twice so we've got that nice strength again in a matching thread, of course. So that will be our body front that will make his belly and then we will need to sew his body back. When we do so, we need to incorporate the little tail. So whatever you've chosen for your, for your little tail, we're going to pop that into the seam. Now we're going to sew the same seam on the back, right sides together, and we're going to sew that back seam and make a measurement two centimetres from the lower edge and that's where your tail will be sewn into the seam. So we just pop that one in and I will overcast, give yourself a little bit of room and I will overcast that one in before I sew it and then I'll stitch twice, make sure that we machine sew over that section nice and strong. Here is our body front, that seam sewn and just turned through, just roll those seams out so they're nicely rounded and this is our body back with our little tail incorporated into the seam and that one's turned through as well. Now before we sew the body front to the body back we're going to incorporate our little legs into the seam as we do so. So we have to sew. I find the easiest way to do this is to actually sew your little leg pieces onto the front, onto the body front and then we sew all of those layers together. So I just find by just positioning them there and using my extra strong upholstery thread I just tack those and the distance away from that centre seam is only about a half a centimetre. So just a very small amount, the same distance each side, we'll do the same with the other one and of course make sure that the little toes are pointing forwards 
so you can see how I have that one there. So I'm just going to tack those two little legs into place. So with those little legs sewn into place on the body front, that's how it should look. See that there? And we turn him around, that's how he'll sit. You can see that's his body front. So now we just add our body back. And it's a lot easier because we don't have to worry about those legs because they're all sorted. So just pop that little body back, back to the wrong side. Now we're pinning right sides together. Right sides together. First seam that I like to match up, of course, is that center base seam. And I will pop a pin in there, straight through the two so that they're really well lined up. And then I will continue to pin you can do it one side at a time if you like and I will pin all the way till our mark. Now on your pattern pieces you'll see when you downloaded your PDF pattern pieces there were two little marks on your bodies. That is our pin mark and we only sew the seam to that line. So we pin and overcast all the way around the body, incorporating the little legs, keeping them inside both sides. And I will machine sew that one twice. So that's our two bodies, pieces put together, body front and body back put together that seam sewn. If you find that a little difficult on your machine when you get to this section because you're quite congested up here with the little feet and tail, coming out the top, you can do what I've done there and I've just sewn a stab, a nice strong stab back stitch just a little way down, just a few centimetres down each side and then I've machined that bottom edge just for, it's a bit easier to get under the machine through that section. So now we just turn that one through. So there's our little body all turned through, rolled those seams out and you can see that back and front there. So our next step is to add our little arms. Now while we still have that little top open there, we have access to be able to sew our arms on before we stuff the body and it's actually the easiest way to do it. So you'll take your ruler and the measurement from the start of that seam is two centimeters and you can see I've just put a little mark there and I will use an extra strong upholstery thread again and I will bring my needle through and I will actually sew on each little arm with its button through that shoulder because I have access to get through to the back there. So I will sew each little arm in place, make your mark either side. I have my little arms sewn onto my body there now and I have added some beads, some bead filling in there and I've really pushed those down to really settle them in because we want him to sit, that's why we like the beads because it gives a little bit of weight there. And now we're going to top that off with some polyester filling. Now by adding the polyester filling now it means we can really force those beads down and distribute them in a way that makes them sit nicely. So it's just a matter of filling that the rest of that little body out. You can use a, a knitting needle to push that down or again just your forceps to get those pellets right where you want them. You want to have his little belly filled out nicely and that he's sitting nicely at the back there. And once you've filled that all the way up to the top, just allow yourself enough room to be able to pop a pin in through here. Again, we're going to match up those two centers and then we will close that opening all the way across the top using our purlay thread. Again, just as we did on the arms and a blanket stitch, just as we did there. So it's exactly the same stitch 
just to close that one up once we've filled up right to the top. So that's that little opening closed with that blanket stitch as we did before and we have our little monkey body all ready and waiting for his little head so we'll get on with that one so we're going to pop him aside there so you can wait there and now the first step with our head is to take one of our head pieces and we with a hot iron and a protective cloth fuse on your face pieces so first goes your mask your little monkey mask and then your little ear pieces which sit lower on the ear and also center your little nose now the little nose sits quite high up so that we get that the look of a nice long lip so quite high up and a, probably about level at the top of the muzzle there and just press that little nose those pieces into place you can do them individually if you like layer them press those on once my face pieces are all fused into place there my next step will to be will be to sew a blanket applique stitch I will use the pink on the ears to outline the ears each side I will stay with the same face tone to sew on the mask just starting from the base and around and then I will match up to sew the nose on just a tiny little blanket applique stitch just to set that nose into place and if you haven't sewn a blanket applique stitch before it is the same stitch that we used on the little heart and I do have a video how to sew the blanket applique stitch that will help you with that one so I will go ahead and work each of those shapes so now we have our face pieces appliqued into place and we need to mark in a line for our little monkey mouth. So I'm going to use just a teddy bear disc here. You can use anything, perhaps the, the rim of a cup, anything gives you a nice rounded shape. You can make that uh, smile as wide or as small as you like. And I've just marked in a line there with my fine permanent marker. I don't know if you can see that there just very lightly and I will thread up my machine with a dark brown thread and I will stitch that smile line two times on my machine. So there's my smile in place and now we just assemble our head. So we just put right sides together and it's just a matter of lining up those edges. You can pin that one in place if you like or or you can just uh, overcast as I will overcast that that lower seam and the seam that we sew on the machine is just from that ear round to the other ear and I will sew that twice so there's a little head sewn and I've turned that one through and now what we're going to do is just add a little bit of filling so just a bit of polyester filling and we just want to fill out that bottom half of, of the face there. Just make sure that you're getting pushing those seams right out and tucking that in. You can use your, your forceps or a knitting needle if you like, but it's just about filling out just up to about the middle of the, perhaps the nose there. And then we're actually going to be gluing with some clear craft glue just to stand the clear craft glue. I'm going to glue each of those ears together. Just the ears, not the top of the head this time because we're going to keep on adding some filling. So you can clamp them if you like. You can use an alligator clip to clamp those ears while they dry. I usually find that's useful. Clamp them shut and then we will set that one aside glue the other side and we'll set that one aside to dry for probably about five or ten minutes. So now that both our ears are dry, remove those clamps and I have threaded up my needle with uh, my Pearl A thread again and now we're going to work the same stitch that we did on the top of the body there. It's just a standard blanket stitch and we're going to work that stitch from the base of that ear. We're going to close that opening and round to the other side of the ear 
as you're doing so, you can add a little more filling so that we've really got a nice little full head there. So there you can see my little monkey's head, that blanket stitching all done to close that seam. I've now marked in where my little button eyes will go. Just pop your button on there and just check that you've got it in the right position. Pop a little couple of marks and I've threaded up my needle with extra strong upholstery thread and I've come in from behind with a knot behind and come right out and I've just started to sew that little button on. The reason why we do it now is so that we can get uh, just a little bit of needle sculpting happening with that eye pulling right in. As you sew those little buttons on, make sure that you're pulling and anchoring as you go and the same. You can see that you'll get that nice little pulled in effect. So there's what your little eyes should look like, nicely stitched in and you can see how they've just pulled in that uh, plush there and it gives that nice little deep set look. So our final step is to attach our finished hair to our body. The easiest way for me to show you how to do that, it's done with a button in a, in a sort of a, a hinge way. I've actually just taken my needle, it's about a centimetre from the middle of the back of the head. I've taken my needle through with a doubled length of extra strong upholstery thread and passed it through perhaps just a centimetre and a half and so I have two of the ends pulled through there. I'm then going to take the end that is still threaded and I'm going to pass it back through here on the body. So I'm going to go back through there and then we're going to come through onto my button and pull that one all the way out and then I will repeat the process with the opposite side. So I'm going to do that and I'll show you what that looks like. So you can see that what you have there is like a hinged attachment and now that's all that's needed is for those two ends to be tied off. I will knot those ends, squeeze in and knot those ends about four times. There we have that little button all tied off and snipped and there we have our gorgeous little monkey. Pop his tail around the front and there we go. He looks just as good made up in colours. You could make him up really quite girly in purples and pinks. It's just really sweet. Well, I hope you've enjoyed making this little one with me. If you have, you could give this video a thumbs up. That would be beaut. Remember to subscribe so you don't miss any of my upcoming projects. Most of all, remember to pay it forward because everybody can. And until next time, it's Huru from me.